Welcome back to another episode behind the scenes of exactly how I'm scaling my new design agency, Monday to Friday in real time in the hopes it answers some of your unanswered questions back at home. So here's an update of how the agency is growing. We currently have two projects on the go. The first one is a discounted brand identity project at £2,000 for a hair product company, which we're making very good progress on at the minute. And the second project is for an influencer who wants to rebrand his wildlife experiences business called Save Our Species Alliance. And we managed to close this project last week at £6,500 pounds now this is going to be a full brand identity plus a website which i've offered at a reduced rate simply because i want to build my portfolio in web design so what's the plan for today well in the last episode you'll see that we mind mapped and planned our logo design for the volatile brand identity so today's all about sketching and developing those concepts inside of adobe illustrator okay so we've successfully planned ideas and inspiration but what's the key to a successful sketching session well after plenty of trial and error over the past couple of years this is my most effective sketching method. First, you want to completely clear your desk of any distractions. No phone, no laptop, especially no electronics. Since the stage of sketching is heavily based around ideating concepts, drop the iPad and stick to the pencil and paper. If you're wondering why, it's because this way you'll be so much more or less likely to open notifications and ultimately get lost in that TikTok doom scroll. The next stage is to have our mind map to hand along with any inspiration we've collected over the past couple of days. Now with our pencil and paper, the plan is to get at least 50 sketches down on a piece of paper. Now this number isn't strict. However, if I don't reach at least 50 concepts, I personally don't have full confidence that this logo mark could be the best to my ability. So I've got my black wing pencils and my Fred Rigoni notepad and I'll see you in 50 sketches. Okay, so here are the sketches that I've come up with so far. I'm gonna quickly run you through a few of the concepts. So we've got the vault speech marks here, which is potentially one of my favorite concepts because we can use this in the word mark. And we can also have this as our social media icon here with the, the left speech marks and the right as well. Now the speech marks could symbolize dynamic communication, which would ultimately emphasize the brand's direct and also energetic interaction with its audience. Now it strongly aligns with Volatile's voice, which is bold, motivational, designed to resonate with young trendsetting males if you watch me create the strategy in I believe episode four. And yeah, this is a direction that I'm very keen to take into Illustrator as soon as possible, really. Next, we have the eye with a bolt inside. Now, this represents vision and insight with the bolt emphasizing quick impact and high energy, which again, linked to the strategy is what Volatile is all about, key attributes in the Volatile brand. It suggests that Volatile is not about seeing trends, but it's also about being a visionary in the hair care industry, which is very important based on our strategy. We have a few abstract versions of vaults here with the two Vs making a bolt and also this bolt here with a gap in between. I tried some more versions of the pupil with a vault inside. This one I was really liking with the iris replaced with a uh, bolt. And we have this really bold power hand with bolt fingers. Now, this is a strong visual metaphor for control and empowerment, I'd say. And this is gonna resonate with the brand's mission and ensure that users with the product will enhance the personal style and also the confidence. Now I've experimented with incorporating a negative space vault inside of the word mark with the volatile with a stretch O. And I've got a few other unique versions such as this smiley face um, with a vault instead of the mouth. More versions of the eye with a bolt iris. And I also tried a, a bolt with a, a face inside but it didn't really work out very well. Now in this stage of the sketching process, I'm completely out of ideas right now which is normal. What I like to do is usually split up the sketching session by creating some vector versions on Adobe Illustrator and possibly coming back to it tomorrow. This allows your eyes and your brain to have a rest, think about them whilst you're sleeping. I often find that my best ideas come just as I'm about to go to sleep, which is very strange. You might have the same. And sometimes even when I'm in the shower. So by giving about 24 hours in between, you'll be able to identify your favorite concept and you'll also most likely be able to come up with some more. So let's jump over to Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to refine a few of these concepts that I believe are the best ones. And I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way as I do so. Okay, so we've got the word mark in front of us and a big reason why I've started to choose the typography first is because this ultimately determines the width of our logo type. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, first of all, let's bring in our sketches, which we've just created. And I like to do this by simply taking a photo and air dropping them as you've just seen. And now one thing that we don't want to do, which stems off what I've just said then, is we don't want to create a logo that's dramatically thicker than our word mark. And this is because it's just not going to look cohesive in the slightest when we develop it. Now we can't think of each element in the brand identity as an individual. It all pieces together, like I said, as one video visual identity. So that means we've got to make absolutely everything cohesive. An example of that with the word mark is that the gaps in between each letters is the same width as these dashes. And these dashes are the same width 
as the letters. Now this ensures that there's consistent visual spacing throughout the word mark. And ideally, we'd like to create the logo type with similar properties. So let's take a look at how we're gonna do this. Now, I'm going to develop a few of these now, which I think are the strongest ones. And the first one's gonna be this speech mark logo type. The second is going to be this abstract vault logo. I'm gonna try the hand because I think that it will work nicely. We'll try the negative space in the O. And I think out of the I logos, I think this one will come across too thick. I think this is too generic. So I need to choose between this one or this one, which means I'm going to probably go for this one at the bottom because I still want to go with that minimalist style. And I think we could really nicely work the width of the eye with the width of the letters. Whereas with this one, I think it might end up being a bit too thick. And with this one, I just think it's a little bit too minimal for my liking. Okay, so before we start developing the logo, I'm going to show you exactly how I set up my logo grids. Create a new artboard. Create it as a thousand by a thousand. You can change the properties here. And then I go to the rectangle tool, tap it once, change it to a thousand by a thousand, align it to the center, head to object, path, splits path, split into grid, sorry. Change it to a hundred by a hundred, which makes each square 10 pixels. Keep the stroke at 0.25, click command two to lock it. And now we have an accurate grid. Now when we're using snap to point, everything should be exactly 10 pixels, which you can check. And then when we click shift and right up, down, this is going to move them perfectly in line with our grid because it moves it 10 pixels at a time. If we want to be more precise, then we just click it once and that will move it one pixel. This ensures that we can create really accurate grids. And I didn't do this initially until I watched the Monochromatic Institute's video on Instagram. And it's been amazing ever since. So this is what I've stuck to. I used to do it on show grid, which is command apostrophe. But to be honest, it's a pain in the ass to work with. I can't lie. So this is what we're going to be working with today. Now we'll bring over our word mark over here and I'm going to change this to gray for now. Right. So the first one we're going to develop then is going to be the speech marks. So the idea here is for the word mark, we'll have the two speech marks on the side. And then for the profile picture, we'll have it as just the speech marks next to each other in a left and right format. Okay. So a quick look at the first direction. This is with the speech marks. This is how I envisioned it. So you have the logo here, which would be on the social media icons, which would actually be in a rounded format similar to this. I know that's an oval, but we'll just tweak that slightly for now. And you start to envision what it would look like on social media, etc. Now combining this with the expanded text, I think we could make a very unique identity and it's definitely going to be one that I end up proposing to Jude in a developed identity. But in the meantime, we're going to develop some of the other sketches that I've created. Hey, okay, so an update of exactly what I'm looking at here. I've developed a few different versions. And to be honest, out of all of the sketches so far, I think by far the strongest concept is the bolt speech mark. Now this is completely aligned with our strategy because ultimately the vision was not about just creating looks, but about making statements and also driving influence within the target audience. Now, not only that, but the speech marks are also simple and minimalist, which aligns with the bold edgy visual style. However, despite the simplicity, it's also got a double meaning, which is perfect. Now this is also completely aligned with the audience that we're going for because a common trend that you see in streetwear is the speech marks around text. So this could work really, really well when we start to incorporate it into display posters. So when we look at the whole visual identity in one, this really ties together the strategy along with the assets that we'll be creating as well, which is what creating a visual identity is all about. Now, as you can see, I experimented with a few other versions. I quite like the idea of the power hand with the bolt fingers. It's a cool logo on its own, but is it really suited to this brand? I don't think so. So this would be an awesome concept for another brand, maybe like a gaming brand or something like that. I think with the other direction that we were looking at in the a few episodes ago, this logo would have worked really, really nicely. But with this typography, I think there's too much going on. It's too bold. It's too powerful. And that's why I'm completely swaying towards the first direction. So that pretty much wraps up today's episode. In tomorrow's, I think we're going to be creating the strategy for the Sosa brand. However, if I don't have all the questions received back in time, then we'll be creating the rest of this brand identity pulling together different assets, piling poster styles, and ultimately bringing together an entire brand presentation because we've got a call with Jude booked for Thursday, I believe. So by Thursday, I need to have pretty much everything together. Now, this is going to be a brand presentation to confirm the brand. It's not going to be the brand guidelines. And then once we've got this signed off, I'm going to be creating the brand guidelines from scratch in case you've never made one before. And I can show you exactly how it's done from start to finish. I'll most likely be creating it as a PDF first. And then the goal will be to take it into Framer and try and build our first brand guidelines on Framer and host it as a live website. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you tomorrow around the same time.